In this graphics design lesson, we're going to have some creative fun in fireworks. Making a 3D looking version of the Android robot. Let's create a new fireworks document PNG. I have mine set to 1000 by 550. Okay. Now I'm going to go to Google and hit images. And I'm going to search Google images for Android logo. And I'll grab this one. I'll just click on that. Then I'll press view image. And then I can right click that. Copy that image. Go into fireworks. Press control V to paste it. And it's humongous. So I'm going to scale it down. You can hold shift and mouse wheel to get that zoom in and out functionality. So there's 100%. I'm going to make it just a little bit smaller than that. The larger you can work with it, the better because you'll have better resolution when you go to shrink it down for a web page or whatever. So really all we want to do is get the shape off of this thing. That way we have the right proportions to the 3D version. So now let's go into our tools and we're going to grab out a rectangle. Now let's put our little crosshair right about at the edge of the rectangle for the body of the robot and then we'll drag out until it's about the width of the body. Alright, so I'll move it over one pixel. I'm going to make it 206 and 187. Now what we can do is just make that a totally different color for now and then you can round the edges on that rectangle until it meets up on the bottom. You don't want to you don't have to worry about these top ones meeting up for now because we're going to fix that. But we want to meet up those bottom edges. So you can see how when you're rounding it, you want to just make that bottom edge meet the green bottom edge, its curvature. And you can adjust the opacity on that square, that rectangle if you like, by going like that. So you can see if it matches up well. That looks good to me. Now we have the bottom body curvature correct. Now we got to fix that top, so we'll just grab another rectangle and put it up top. And we'll make sure it meets the dimensions of the one under it. We'll bring this back up to 100 opacity. So grab both of those together now and go to modify, combine paths, and union. That way it's all one piece. Now we can take out an ellipse. We're going to do the same thing for the head pretty much. We're going to try and line it up. I think it was 206, right? This was 206 wide, so we want to make that 206 and bring down the opacity a little bit on that. So we can see this needs to be a little bit wider. So let's make that like 224. That's a little bit too wide, so let's make it 212. And that looks good enough to me. So now we're going to grab another rectangle, draw it over that ellipse only until it meets that edge where the bottom of the robot's head is. So meet that edge right there. And then grab this one and this one together by holding shift and then go to modify, combine paths, and punch. Now you can bring the opacity on that all the way back up. Now let's do the arms and legs and those are very simple. You just grab a rectangle and cover that arm just about like that and then you can round 100% on the edges. It looks like it could be wider. Let's make it 47 wide and a little bit higher as well, 138. Okay, now let's take that, control C, control V, put one over here as well, right there. And we're going to grab another one, control C, control V, and put it right down here to cover that leg. And then control C, control V, and move that one over with your arrows till it covers the other leg. Now all we need is the two little antennas. So let's grab a rectangle and we'll make it about, I don't know, about that wide and about that long doesn't have to be perfect maybe about like that and we'll round that a hundred percent looks like it should be a little thinner so I'll make it six pixels wide so now I'm gonna grab that control C control V and I'm gonna go ahead and rotate that till I have the same rotation as the one there I'm gonna put it right over on top of it highlight that one I put in place control C control V flip the new copy and just use my arrow keys to slide it on over to cover the other one. Now all we need to do is bring the opacity down on this head and put in the eyeballs. So we'll grab an ellipse and we'll throw in two little eyeballs. Put them in the right position there and I'm going to go ahead and make that white for now. Press Control C, Control V and use your arrow key to just slide the other one over into place. Now you can return full opacity to the head. 
Now you don't need this anymore back behind there. You can just move it off to the side. Now we'll be turning all these shapes green and we'll be putting gradients on most of them to give them depth. Now I can go ahead and select that and press Control X to remove it. I'm going to highlight all of these shapes. Just bring them down a little bit and put them in the center of my stage or my canvas. And I'm only keeping this here to refer to those colors. But basically you just want to copy that color. You can also just have drawn out a rectangle and then copy the color like this. See? So whatever way you want to do it. Now you can get rid of this. Control X. Just so long as we have the color available. Whatever way you want to get it. Alright, now what we're going to do is make it look like it has a satin finish and it has a 3D appearance. But the first thing we'll do is start with these guys up top. So we'll change the color on that to that green. And for these we're just going to use the simple bevel and emboss filter. So select both of those by using shift and then go to bevel and emboss, inner bevel. Now since I like the way this one looks better, I'm going to press control C, control V, make a copy, flip it, and bring it over to where the other one is. And just remove the one on top. So grab the one on top, press control X. Now they look identical. You can take the head and the eyes select all three and bring those back to front by pressing control shift up arrow key so now the antenna are behind those shapes so we want light coming from the top and we also want a perspective of looking down at the robot a little bit So what we'll do is grab an ellipse and we're gonna put that ellipse right here on this edge try and line it up with that corner and then draw it out and make it not very high maybe 12 Changing the height to 10 might be good enough. So now I'm going to change the color from solid to gradient. And I'm going to give it a radial gradient. And in the center, make it this green. And on the outside, I'll also make it this green. Then I'll take that green on the outside and make it much darker. Okay. And also make the one on the inside a little darker. Now we're going to take the head and we're going to change the color on that to a gradient radial. And on the inner, we're going to do the same thing, put the green on the inner and outer colors. And on the outer color, we're going to make it a little bit darker. And we'll make actually the outer edge not so dark. Maybe right there. Now we can put the gradient anywhere we like within that area. So you can bring this down here, put it up top, wherever you want. And I'm going to make that a little bit lighter. The one in the center, a little bit lighter. So you can just tune your colors to make it look any way you want. Now the eyeballs, we're going to select those together and we're going to make those a gradient as well. Radial, make them both green. And actually the outside, we're going to make black instead of green. Then we'll just take one of those. You can zoom in by holding control, the mouse wheel, zoom in and adjust that gradient if you like. I'm going to put mine right about like that. Or maybe right about there. Actually, no, down a little more. Like that. Then I can take this one, Control C, Control V, and just move it over in place where the other one is. And then take the other one on top and Control X. Now they both look the same. Now we want to get another ellipse over the head, starting at this edge here and meeting at this other edge of the head, and then move it up into place to where it matches right there. So you have basically what you're doing is you're giving the bottom of the head a little curvature so that you have the 3D effect. So I'm going to grab those two shapes together, go to modify, combine paths, and union them. Now you can select all three of these items together, control shift down arrow key to send them to back. And if you want, you can maybe put a little edge on those eyes. Nah, no edge probably looks better. Or maybe if we make a black edge. Oh, that's too much. No edge. Now this character is going to be shrunken down to the size we want to display it on the web. But at first you want to make it pretty much as big as you can make it on the screen. And then when you shrink it down, it'll have better resolution. So now let's give this a filter of inner shadow coming from the bottom. So we're going to change the angle to 90 because we want the light source coming from the top. So we're going to give us an inner dark shadow 
coming from the bottom maybe three pixels let's see what that looks like maybe even a little less let's make that two pixels now we're also going to give it an inner shadow so add another inner shadow and this one we're going to make it white or you can make it a very very bright green and we're going to make softness raise the softness up a little bit now we can select the body what we're going to do to that is change the color from a solid red to a gradient bars we're going to change the color of the bars to our green and on the outside we're going to make that bar a little darker and even a little bit darker than that let's go ahead and take these two legs and send them to back by hitting control shift down arrow key now what we want to do is take this little ellipse here and we can just copy that one basically press control C control V bring it down here and make it to where it meets up you go ahead and control and mouse wheel and zoom in put this to where it meets up right about with this point right here and this point right here so grab it make it hit that point right there maybe bring it up one right there and then adjust its width to where it meets this other point right about here so basically what you're doing is adding a curve to the bottom of this guy because he needs that since we have a downward uh, we're looking a little bit down at the robot so this has to be bulged this uh, shape has to have that on there or it's gonna have that flat appearance and you don't want that so you put the little shape on there then you select both of those together go to modify combine paths and union so now you have a little bit of bulge that you need down at the bottom or the curvature now this shape here that little one needs to go back to top so you press control shift up arrow key now select this shape and what we're gonna do is add just a very small amount of white drop shadow so we'll go to filter shadow and glow drop shadow make that white let's tighten it up by making it maybe four and the angle we want is 270 straight down if you're having trouble with the dial you can just make that 270 with your keyboard and press enter and we're gonna take that and make that drop shadow not so faded bring that down to three then bring the opacity down a little bit and actually you can play with the height of this see how it's 10 I'm gonna make it 12 again see what it looks like I think I like that better I'm gonna highlight all of these red rectangles that we put in place and we're gonna change that from solid to gradient bars as well I'm gonna make them pretty much the same color as the body so put that at the bright green color and put this one as the dark green on the outside now if you don't want such a bar look you can change that bright one make it not so bright make it just a little darker and it'll blend a little better so first we want to put a let's see let's go ahead and grab all of those again by holding shift as we select and looking at these eyeballs they just look too big to me so I'm gonna make those instead of 23 I'm gonna try 17 by 17 that's a little too small How about 19 yeah that looks better to me so let's also make that one 19 and 19 we might have to move this one over a couple of pixels I think like that now let's also put some shadow on the bottom of this body so let's go to filter shadow and glow inner shadow and we're gonna make the inner shadow come from the bottom so we'll put it on 90 the angle will be 90 and we'll make it fade in a little bit more the softness we will bring the softness in a little bit bring down the opacity just a touch and that looks pretty good now let's take all of these little feet and hands let's take all the four of those rectangles by holding shift and we're gonna give those filters of inner shadow and we're gonna make it come around from the bottom again so we'll put that on 90 and bring the softness up a little bit and the opacity down just a little bit now these two we're gonna give those an extra set of inner shadow and that's gonna be white and make that come from the very top so we'll put that on 270 and make that softer a little bit and bring down the opacity just a touch now you can see if we change our background our canvas from white to black everything still looks great and it looks like we need to bring this up one maybe two pixels right there let's go back to a white background now what you can do is go ahead and select all of those things press ctrl G 
Then if you want to make a smaller version, press Control C, Control V, make a whole copy, go to Modify, Flatten Selection, and then you reduce its size. And you flatten it before you reduce its size. That way you maintain a nice clean lines. And it has a very sharp resolution when you shrink it down to that size. See how nice that looks? And it gives the Android robot a whole lot more life. Now you can take that one, Control C, go to File, New, and get it ready to put on a web page. All you have to do now is go to, if you, if you want to make it a clear background, PNG, you can take your canvas from white to nothing. That'll give you a clear PNG. Then you go to File, Export Wizard, Continue, Continue, Exit, and then you hit JPEG, or if you want a PNG 32 to keep the transparent background, you can do that and export it onto your computer. And then you'll have that file all ready to go to put on the web, or anywhere you want to put it. And it might even help to grab this thing, Control C, go to File, New, and make a really big one so you can put it uh, the width that maybe a thousand pixels wide 800 pixels high okay and then press control V paste a little copy in there and then you can just grab it and hold shift while you resize it see how you make it really big like that and then take that control C control V modify flatten selection and then when you reduce the size of that one you'll have really crispy lines the resolution will be nice and tight so it looks really good at any size that you make it but when you're creating it you want to make sure that it's really big before you reduce its size down so you keep clean lines you don't want to make it really small but you can shrink it down to be really small when you're done and this one here this big one or really this one the original one we worked on is the one you can keep for editing later or whatever. But I was just showing you with these, I don't need to save those. I was just showing you with these how to export it out and how to make it really big then flatten it then shrink it down so you can keep really tight resolution on your lines. Now there's tons more things you can do with this. Instead of having a satin finish you can make this little robot have a more glossy finish. You can put added effects onto it. 